I'm Kainson, the Tech Pro, and today I'm going to teach you how to perform K-means clause train step by step with no step skips from the scratch, from beginning all the way to the end. So let's get started. Before I continue, I'd like to remind you to subscribe to my channel. If you've not subscribed, just hit the subscribe button and feel free to let me know if you have any challenges by leaving a comment for me below. If you subscribe, that kind of motivates me to keep making these lessons. All right, so just go ahead to open a new notebook. I already opened the new notebook and gave it a name, K-means clause string. So the first thing we are going to do is to import the necessary libraries or the models. Import, let's call it required libraries or models. Is that, you can also call it modules or library. So one, the, the, of course we need to import numpy, numpy as np, and for plotting, we need to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, all right? And then we need to import something we'll need to generate our data set. This is called make blobs. This is, uh, it's, this is contained in the model sklane.dataset. So I'm going to say from from sklane.datasets import make underscore blobs, all right? So at this point, I'm going to run these lines to make sure there is no error in it. And for now, there is no error, everything is okay. So the next thing we want to do is to create our data set. Create, or let's call it generate, our data set. All right. So we will generate a data set. Let's call it data set equals make blobs. You use the function make blobs. And if you if you want to make if you use this function, you specify number of data points you want. So you specify number of data points or number of sample points. Let's use, let's say, 200 data points. And we need number of uh, clusters. We need to choose number of clusters, and that will be specified by centers. So let's start with four clusters at this point. And we want to choose number of features. Number of features is like whether it's two dimensional data or three dimensional data or four dimensional data, as the case may be. Let's keep it simple by choosing uh, two features. Num number of features is equal to two. And yes, we need to specify the cluster standard deviation to be, you can choose any number from between one and two. So let's say 1.6. And finally specify a random state. This I can't explain for now, but you need to include it. Random state, let's say 50, okay. All right, so I'm gonna run it at this point. So everything run perfectly. So we have our data set. If you want, you can just view the data set and it's gonna display, you have data, this data set. For some reason, it creates a data set of two dimensions. One oh, is this part and this is the second part. We only need the first part. So we need data set zero. So let's assign the data set zero to another variable called points is equal to data set zero. So data set zero is basically the first part. Data set one is this, which is what we don't need. So let's, let me run it at this point. So we have points. All right, so at this point we have our data sets. What we can now do is to start performing k-means clustering. So before we perform k-means clustering, we are going to import, import k-means. So k-means is available in sklane.cluster. So I'm going to say from sklane.cluster, uh, import k-means. Take note of the case because we have the first two, the first two uh, letters, the first first two characters there, 
K and M, they are uppercase. Make no mistake about it. And I'm going to run it at this point. The next thing we want to do is to create a K means object. So create a K means object. So K means object will actually be used to perform the clustering and it eventually will provide uh, all the information you need about the clustering. So if you are creating a K means object, you need to specify the number of clusters you need. Remember, in K means clustering, you need to choose the initial number of clusters. So in this case, we are specifying initial number of clusters to be four. Let's say we have start by, with four clusters. And the next thing we, we are going to do is to fit this K means object, tell K means object that the data set we want to use to perform the clustering is this data set. So to do that, simply say K means dot fit and just basically give it the data point or the data set we want, and then let's run it. I also like putting comments so that that will help you uh, be able to read this code. Feed the k means object to the data set. So at this point, you could actually print out or you act, you could actually uh, view. The, 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 the data to see how it looks like. This data has not been clustered at this point, but you can view it to see how it looks like. So let me just paste the codes to view the, the to view it and uh, this data point. So let me just take out unnecessary things. It's not necessary. So if I do a scatter plot of these data sets of the data, this is what uh, actually data sets, not data. It's actually data sets. <coughs> so it also we have data sets at this point. So run. So this is how the data set looks like. It's not clustered at this point. It's just a normal data set. So let's now perform clustering, which we've done. We fitted the gaming subjects. Uh, through our uh, to our data our data set which is this. So the next nice thing we want to now do is to uh, try to identify the clusters. So to identify the clusters, let me assign the clusters to an object called a variable called clusters is equal to k means k means uh, k means K means of cluster centers. Okay. K means of cluster centers. Okay. So that is what we should do. Um, let's see. All right. So I'm going to now print out the clusters. Let me print out the clusters at this point. Uh, let me use a comment first. Print out the clusters. So you can just say print clusters. So if I run it, you can see that it displays the clusters. These are the, the points and the for the clusters. Okay. All right, but we are not done yet. So what we now want to do, what we now want to do is to is to is to now Re, re, continue to, to readjust the values of these centers of these clusters until we have a uh, convergence. So to do that, what we are going to do is simply say we create a, I want to create a new object and I'm going to say k means dot fit predict points. So what we are doing here is this is the same data point we have and then we are trying to recalculate the positions of the clusters using our data set. And we are I'm creating a new object, a new object called uh, y uh, k means. So basically it's still the same as the clusters but this time we are adjusting the, the position of the of the of the centroid of the clusters until we have a convergence. So I'm going to run it at this point. Okay, so 
at this point, we now have four clusters and they have converged at this point. So what we will now do is to plot these data points uh, with these clusters inside. And then we are going to color each cluster with a different color. So let's start with plotting the first one. Let me just check YKM. Okay, so this cannot. So this I, I so this is YKM. So this YKM is 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 values assigned to each data point. So instead of using all the 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 um the values we predicted, it assigns it of uh the gate one two three four for each data point is actually the each data point could be in cluster one cluster two cluster three or cluster four so what we are saying is that if we have let's say let's say we have points so this point you see each of these points like this one belongs to either cluster one cluster two cluster three or cluster four cluster zero one two three right so that is why we have YKM counting from zero to three. Okay, let's go to the interesting part. Let's plot these, the, 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 the data sets, and then we try to put the clusters in between. So I'm going to do a scatter plot, plt.scatter, and for points where KM is equal to zero, for points where YKM is equal to zero, zero, and for points for YKM is zero one. YKM is zero one. So this is like the first cluster. All right. So let's use size to be size of the of the marker to be eighty. Actually, I'll use 50 and let me color it to be color to be red. Right. So I'm going to plot it at this point. Points, actually points, not points. So points. Okay, so it says unknown property size. So this is not size, it is just S. So S is for size so it's actually marker size all right so we've plotted the first point so we are we're having this this point all over the place the reason is because the the we we've not had any other point plotted so let's plot for the second cluster this time and we are going to color it blue so i'm going to copy this one and paste it and this is for zero for one zero and one one and the color is going to be blue so let's run it so we have two clusters i printed let me just use plt.show all right so let's do for the remaining two so i'm going to copy this two and paste hmm. okay so I have zero 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 one so we have one zero one one this should be two zero and this should be three zero so this should be one sorry one two and three all right so now i want to color this one yellow and i want to color this one cyan let's color the second one let's say red green okay so at this point i'm going to run everything and now we have all the clusters but we are not done yet let's now position the centroids or the the clusters at the position where they are remember we have four clusters you can see so let me just position them in this place i'm going to say plt sorry sorry for this plt.scatter this time I'm going to plot clusters, clusters uh, zero, 
cross sign because we have this is zero zero this is this is zero zero and zero one so plus a zero zero and point close as zero one I think that should be correct I don't really know so I would like to use marker to be uh, to be star if I'm not mistaken to be star and the size of the marker should be let's say 100 so let me try plots name plot is not defined so this plt actually plt and not plot so let's see all right so let's see okay so we have marker but we also need the color let's color it black so that it becomes black color equals black all right so you can see uh you can see the size is quite small I, i'm gonna make the size to be let me try to make the size to be let's say 200 okay so i'm going to run again okay so i think it's hiding it's kind of hiding behind so maybe i'll try to put it under i don't know if it's gonna work but it's hiding behind so i'm gonna run all right so you can see one of the cluster centers is right here let's do for another one let me do for another one this time um copy this This time, let's do for this is zero 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 one. So this is one zero and one 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 zero and one one. Let's leave the size to be the same. And I'm going to also do. No, well, let's just run it so that we just see how it is. So you see the second the centroid for the second cluster, and we are going to repeat this, the the same thing for the other two. All right, so this is two, and this is three. Then we go for the last one. This is two, and this is three. All right, so if I run it at this point, you can see that we've performed clustering perfectly. The centroids are very much in place. And I'd like to thank you for viewing. I'd like to stop here. Feel free to copy the code, use it, try to change up things a bit to make sure you understand it. If you have any challenges, leave a comment for me. Remember, please subscribe to my channel by hitting the subscribe button below. If you subscribe and I get to know, it kind of motivates me to keep making this lesson for you. And we'll see in the next class, which is going to be how to perform hierarchical clustering in Python.